Hi everybody, my name is Chris from Reading Town and thank you for joining us today for Junior Times. Now let me ask you a question. When, after we eat our food, what do we do with all the food that's left over, the food that we don't eat? Do we just give it to somebody or do we just throw it away? Now that's just our family, right? But what about supermarkets and these big marts like eMart? What do they do? with the food that they don't sell or they can't you know, give to people. So uh, in France, they are to reduce supermarket waste and feed the hungry. So waste is what they're throwing away. So all the food and vegetables that they do not sell, that's considered waste. And what do they want to do with it? They want to reduce it, meaning they want to make it smaller. They don't want to throw away too much food. They only want to throw away a little bit of food. They don't want to waste it. And what will they do? They will feed the hungry, meaning the homeless people and people that can't get food regularly like you and I. So earlier this year, France became the first country in the world to create a law, a new rule, requiring supermarkets to donate food close to its expiration date to local food banks. So they're requiring supermarkets. They are making the supermarkets donate the food to give the food to who? To the local food banks that feed the homeless people and poor people. Uh, close to its expiration date. Expiration date is the day that we see on the milk. So it says drink this before this date. That's the expiration date. So they are going to donate this food. Charities such as like UNICEF and uh, Red Army um, I mean Salvation Army, sorry, will have more food to give out to hungry people. This groundbreaking law, this new and exciting law, has requirements to vastly or greatly reduce or make smaller food waste too. The new law requires or sort of asks the supermarkets that have a floor size total of 400 square meters or more, or more so they're talking about the size of the supermarket. If they're a our big supermarket, 400 square meters, then they're to sign food donation contracts with local charities or face large fines. So these very big marts, over 400 square meters, they have to sign a contract. It's a paper that is a promise. I promise to donate the food. If they do not do that, they will face large fines. Large fines is like a penalty. It's like a punishment. You have to pay money. Supermarkets are also barred. They're stopped. They cannot from spoiling or damaging food on purpose to prevent hungry people from foraging through their waste containers. So foraging through their waste containers, it's when the waste containers are the food garbage bags and foraging is when the homeless people look through it and it's, it seems like that the supermarkets, they were stopping that by making the food dirty before they throw it out. So we have a regular banana. Uh, the supermarket can just throw out the banana and the people can forage it. But the supermarket doesn't like that. So they would cut the banana or make the banana dirty before they throw it out. So no one can eat it. Kind of weird. As a result of this law, food banks throughout France, such as the Salvation Army, will be able to distribute or give out millions more in free meals to people who struggle, who have a hard time, who have a difficult time to eat due to various or many different life reasons that may include they are homeless or jobless, right? So they, uh, they don't have a job, they don't have a home. These are the many reasons why they, it's hard for them to eat. They have a struggle to eat. Another positive aspect, another you know, good side of it is because the food is donated. Donated is when we give something and we don't want anything back. So we donate uh, an apple, we say take this apple, you, know, you can have this apple, it's free. Right? It does not end up in a landfill, it doesn't go to the garbage and therefore greatly reduces CO2 emissions. CO2 emissions are what the gas that comes out of cars and electricity and burning uh, oil. So we're going to reduce that gas uh, that we um, you know, spray into the world. Passage of this law, if this law is passes, if it passes, 
could start a trend or sort of like a new you know, thing to do in other countries for similar laws to be passed. So they're saying if this law is passed in France, then it can be a trend. The other countries, they can look at this and they say, wow, this is a good thing to do. It's a, you know, we can reduce CO2 emissions, we can help homeless people, and they'll start to follow along as well. Okay, we have three key review questions here. The first one, what does France's new law require? Require means what do they ask the supermarkets to do? The new law blanks supermarkets to donate food close to its expiration date to local food banks. So to donate the food is something that the law is telling the supermarkets to do and it's not asking really, it's telling them they have to do it, okay? So it, we have another hint here in the question, what does the new law require? Well, we can use that in similar way. The new law asks or requires supermarkets to donate food, all right? B, what is the result of the new law? What will happen at the end, uh, you know, after it's all finished? Food banks throughout France will be able to blank millions more in free meals to people. So we have one meal, two meals, we have millions of meals, right? So what are we going to do? We can't just give it to all to one person. We have to give one person one and each, everyone, we have to sort of hand it out, right? Give it out. And the way we say that to give one person and to one thing, it is to distribute. So on test days, the teacher distributes the test paper. They give one student one test paper, the other student one test paper, like that. Okay? C, how does the new law affect the environment? So we're talking about the environment, the air, the water, the ground, the mountains and the trees, animals. Because the food is donated, it does not end up in a landfill, which is where they throw out the garbage, and therefore greatly blanks CO2 emissions. So first of all, CO2, carbon dioxide, emissions is talking about the gas or the harmful pollution in the air. It's a bad thing. Pollution is a dirty thing for the environment. So if we have a bad thing, we want to sort of make it smaller, we want to decrease it, we want to not make it so big, right? So the opposite of making it big, we want to make it smaller, it is to decrease or in reduce CO2 emissions. So to reduce is the opposite of increase. So we want to increase our score, then our, our score will be from 50 to 100. If you want to reduce our score, it will be from 100 to you know, 50. You, know, you wouldn't want to do that though. All right. We have three key terms here that we're going to review. A, earlier this year, France blank, the first country in the world to create a new kind of law. So this, France was the first country, and before that, there was no country that you know, donated their food to the homeless people. So France was the first country to change, to be something else, right? Sort of like when a caterpillar, it turns into a butterfly, right? Another word that we can say for that is to become, or the past tense became. So to become something is you're something else, and when you change into, you know, whatever it is you're changing into, that is when you're becoming something. So a baby becomes a boy, and the boy becomes a man, right? There's this change going on. B, blank will have more food to give out to hungry people. So this sort of organization or group, their job is to give food, give water and clothes and sort of basic things that we need. And these groups of people, such as UNICEF and Salvation Army, uh, they're called, over here, charities. Charities are, they're, they're not businesses. Their job is not to make money. Their job is to help people. So they're donating a lot of their things. They're donating a lot of their time. And they're not really making money. Their job is to help people, such as UNICEF is a major charity and Salvation Army is a, a big charity. So, uh, number, uh, letter C, passage of this law could start a new trend 
in other countries for blank laws to be passed. So again, France is the only country that does this right now, but if France is successful, then it could start a trend. It can start sort of like a fashion, like this, doing this is cool, doing this is good, other countries will follow. So in this law for France, if it's passed, then they will have sort of laws that in other countries that are about the same, not exactly the same, but almost the same as this law in France. So another word that we use to say almost the same, but a little different, is we say similar. So the law in France is to give the food to the homeless people, right? So maybe in Germany, they can have a slightly different but almost the same law where they have to give all their bananas to, you know, children. So it's not exactly the same, but it's a little bit the same, right? So to review, became is the past tense of become, and to become is to change into some other thing. So like a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Uh, B, charities. Charities are groups of people that help other people. Their job is to not sell things for money. Their job is to give and donate things to help people. C, similar is when we are about 90% the same, okay? We're not talking exactly the same or totally different. We're talking similar, like 70 to 90% the same. So you and your brother and sister, you are not exactly twins, right? You don't look exactly like each other, but you look similar. You may have the same eyes or just the same nose like that, all right? So next time you are eating with your family, think about where your food is going to. Is it going to the landfill or is it going to help someone or something? All right, uh, thank you for joining us for Junior Times. My name's Chris from Reading Town. I'll see you next time.